So someone asked me on Instagram, hey, I know you probably get this a lot, but what are some qualifications for a sponsorship? My response was, after looking at their footage, whenever you're thinking of looking for sponsors, you have to consider where your skating is. Find companies whose teams skate at a level that matches yours. The best place to start is with your local shop because they have relationships with the brands and if the shop hooks you up, you can build a good relationship. They'll tell reps from the brand about you, leading to you getting rep flow. And if you progress more, the rep flow can lead to you getting flowed by the actual team or brand manager. If you can build that relationship and keep getting better while filming tricks that match what sponsored people your age are doing, place well in contests, things will happen. Remember not to rush. Mm because you can only make one first impression. And if your skills aren't what someone is looking for, they'll remember forever that first impression. Good luck. I got no response, but I saw that the person read this. And that's pretty common. Uh, I've been getting these questions for years, so I'm here to make a video about getting sponsored. It's a very different landscape today versus when I was first getting sponsored. So I got my first sponsor when I was about 14 and a half years old. It was Valley Skate and Surf. Uh, things were pretty simple then. There was no social media. However, nowadays, if you can create a buzz on social media, then that's another path. You can get sponsors that aren't necessarily core skate sponsors, and it just depends on what you want to do. You know, some people just want to have a good time skateboarding, and they rep some brands, get some money, be able to live a life that they want to live, and ha and enjoy themselves while doing it. And I think that's great. But if you're going for the typical path, the typical core skateboarding path. Let me break it down for you. So it's a business relationship, right? These companies are willing to give you something because they see potential in you and they also see that you being associated with their product is going to help you sell more of it. So the quicker you can understand that, the better off you'll be. I would advise most people to start off with the core shop in their area. So not a chain shop if, if, if possible, because you wanna support shops that are owned by skaters, but also you want a core shop that has accounts with the big brands, because that's the way that they're gonna be able to introduce you to representatives from the brands. And if the reps like what you do and have a good rapport with you, they're gonna be willing to give you product from these brands. And that can lead to you getting product from the team managers, right? And then once you get on that factory flow from the team or the brand manager, they might help pay for you to skate a local contest or might help to skate you, help, help pay for you to skate like a Tampa Am, a Phoenix Am, one of the Dan Am contests, something like that. And that's how people are gonna start to see you and see what you do. And that can lead to you actually getting on a team. Now this process usually starts young. So usually 12, 13, 14 is when people start riding for the shop uh, 13, 14, 15 is when their rep flow. From there, by the time they're like 16, their flow for the company, they might go on to some trips, meeting all of the team, and you know, one trip turns into another. Their family might be subsidizing them going on these trips. So they might call the parent and say, hey, if you can pay for your kid's flight, we'll give them per diem and allow them to stay with the team and they can go and meet everybody. But before you get to that point, it's important that you can contextualize your skills. So most of the people who reach out to me are just flat out not good enough to get sponsored. And it's a mistake for them to be reaching out to people to get sponsored. And the reason I say it's a mistake is because you can only make one first impression. And if you get labeled as the person who's been knocking on the door but doesn't have the skills to get in through the door, people are forever gonna remember you that way. And you're just gonna get sorted into that pile. So, I want you guys that are thinking that you wanna get sponsored and you wanna choose that path to start doing this. Look at what you're doing. Look at what people your age are doing who ride for companies like the ones you wanna ride for. And if there is a huge gap in the skills that you have versus the skills that are on display, then you gotta go back and work harder and get better and don't submit to people trying to get sponsored until you can honestly say that you've mostly closed that gap because people are looking for something that makes a good impression on them and if you don't make that good impression you'll forever be sorted into that mediocre pile 
and you might have a high ceiling, but if it doesn't show, then that's just what it is. That person's probably not gonna look at you again. They're probably not. Um, a lot of people suffer from this delusion. I can remember back when I skated for Warco, a guy who would hit me up all the time, he was in his mid 20s and he swore up and down that he was flow for DGK, but they wouldn't do anything for him and that he was better than Darren Harper who was on the team. And he would specifically pick on Darren Harper and I can tell you for a fact that this guy's First of all, his skills weren't on par with Darren Harper's. Second of all, Darren Harper's pop was amazing and Darren Harper was great to watch on a skateboard. This guy just wasn't. He didn't have the explosiveness. He didn't have any quality that would make you want to watch him. And that's another thing about skateboarding. If you don't have that quality that makes someone want to watch the thing that you do, but sometimes it's an intangible that someone like a Darren Harper has, then it just might not work out for you, at least with that person, with that company. You're not what they're looking for. But that shouldn't make you bitter and make you start bad-mouthing other skaters. It just means that that wasn't a good fit for you. So if someone doesn't give you what you want, don't burn the bridge, you know? You just have to keep working if, that, if it's something that you wanna do. But it's a very competitive business and you are competing for resources that are relatively scarce because there's only a specific amount of slots on a team, right? So I would advise you go for the shops first and try to go through that traditional path if being sponsored by core skate companies is what you wanna do. Now on the other hand, let's say you're a little bit older, you're not a teenager and you already got skills. Um, what you can do is you can go out, find someone who films well, film your clips well, and just try to build your social media presence and then work with, with whichever companies are willing to work with you. Um, I myself, I never rode for one of the largest board companies, but Warco Skateboards, who I rode for, we were constantly on the up and up. And so all of us guys were able to get our video parts on all of the major magazines, websites, or on their Instagrams, on their YouTube channels. All of us were able to get in magazines. All of us were able to skate the big contests. And so we were able to get other sponsors that were sending us on trips, that were getting us ads in magazines and things like that. And that's because on my part, I, was, I, I, I knew that once I was ready for that, I was a little older than most people. So I couldn't go at it from the same angle that let's say a 15 year old could go for, go, go at it from. So I had to figure that out. And it's important for you to figure out where you are and what's the best path for you. I can't tell you that, nobody can tell you that. I can only lend you some advice from my experience. And if there's a couple of you who are in a similar place and it resonates with you and you're able to benefit from my experience, I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna leave you with what someone told me a long time ago, which is find the 10 tricks that you can do that look good when you do them and look at what people in the skateboarding industry are doing. So look at skate videos that are out now and look at that trick being done by someone who rides for a company that you admire. And now you find the best obstacles that are as comparable to those obstacles as possible and you do those 10 tricks that you have that you do the best on similar obstacles, filmed as well as you can get them filmed. Edit that together, no fluff. So no music, no fancy cutaways, no B-roll. 30 seconds is the longest you wanna submit. And then submit those to people. And if you can get someone who knows the people you're submitting to to submit it for you, that's better. And yeah, that's a good place to start. Let me know if this video helped any of you guys. Let me know if you want me to talk more about other things in skateboarding besides skate tricks. And yeah, enjoy skateboarding. Thank you for watching. Consider joining my Patreon. Check out www.collageskateboards.com. Buy a deck, maybe a t-shirt. Thank you for your support. Enjoy skateboarding.